Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the recent addition of an unusual eight-foot golden statue atop a new york state courthouse in new york city is causing a stir with some questioning what exactly the statue represents the statue of a horned female stands alongside other sculptures depicting historical, religious, and other legendary lawgivers, all of them men. The female sculpture with hair braided like spiraling horns was installed as part of an exhibition that opened in the last few weeks. Shazara Sikander, the 53-year-old Pakistani-American artist who created the sculpture, says it supports women's rights, abortion, and the late Supreme Court, Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She also made multiple versions of the statue that appear in several public locations in New York City. The sculpture received some backlash from social media users, some saying the statue's symbolism of a horned woman sprouting from a lotus flower appears to be satanic. One Twitter user commented, it looks like something you'd see at a satanic ritual. Satanists and the satanic temple often use imagery of Satan having goat-like horns. The city of New York has just erected a statue on top of a courthouse. It can only be described, if you look carefully, as demonic. It depicts a woman with braids shaped as horns. Apparently, it's supposed to honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her unflinching support for child sacrifice. There's a correlation between child sacrifice in the Old Testament and modern-day abortion. The Bible contains the heartbreaking tale of child sacrifice practiced in the name of Molech, a god of the Ammonites. Molech worship was practiced by the Ammonites and Canaanites, who revered Molech as a protecting father figure. Images of Molech were made of bronze, and their outstretched arms were heated and red hot. Living children were then placed into the idol's hands and died there, or were rolled into a fire pit below. God gave the people of Israel a dire warning concerning child sacrifice and Molech worship, as we read in Leviticus 20 verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Again, ye shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Sadly, King Solomon became involved in this horrendous practice, as recorded in 1 Kings 11, 6-8. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Later, the evil king Manasseh offered his own son as a sacrifice, as did King Ahaz. The people of Judah also participated in this crime against their own sons, a sin so detestable that God said it had never even crossed his mind, as we read in Jeremiah 32, 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Molech, which I did not command them, nor did it come into my mind that they should do this abomination, to cause Judah to sin. In modern society, unprecedented numbers of children have been sacrificed at the hands of abortionists for the sake of convenience, immorality, and pride. Millions of babies have been sacrificed so that their parents can maintain a certain lifestyle. God hates hands that shed innocent blood, and we can be sure that God will judge this horrendous sin. There is good news for anyone who has had an abortion, and that is that God offers forgiveness to anyone who confesses their sins, as we read in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
John 15:18 through 20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A young Georgia police officer says he resigned after being reprimanded for publishing a Facebook post about same-sex marriage and the Bible. Jacob Kersey told CBN News he felt compelled to take a stand for God's word. The controversy began after he posted his personal religious views about marriage online. On January 2nd, I made a Facebook post while I was off duty um, about God's design for marriage. And, and the post simply stated that God created marriage. Marriage refers to Christ in the church, and that's why there's no such thing as homosexual marriage. Now, I know that might be offensive to, to, to the world um, and to some people, but that is a deeply held Christian belief. As you heard, he wrote the post on his own time. He was still called in the next day and told by someone that someone told that someone had complained about it and that he would have to take it down. Kersey said he could not because of his beliefs. After a series of exchanges, he was told he could post Bible verses, but without his own interpretation or opinion. Kersey said the situation forced him to reconsider his position because of the lack of trust from his superiors. There are some people out there um, who have said that I resigned simply because I was told my beliefs were offensive. That's not why I resigned. I resigned because I was given an ultimatum. I was told you can resign now or be fired later. Kershey said he plans to tell his story and take a stand for Christians. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. This joint U.S.-South Korea military drill has prompted a scathing attack from North Korea. After the B-1B heavy bombers and stealth fighters flew exercises, Pyongyang's foreign ministry said in state media Thursday that such drills had pushed the situation to an extreme red line. It also said that the North was not interested in dialogue as long as Washington pursues hostile policies. The White House has hit back at the accusation saying that the U.S. has no such intent towards North Korea. The spat comes hot off the heels of Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's trip to Seoul, during which he vowed to expand military drills and deploy more strategic assets there, such as aircraft carriers and long-range bombers. North Korea's statement cited Austin's trip as a cause for concern, saying, quote, This is a vivid expression of the U.S. dangerous scenario which will result in turning the Korean peninsula into a huge war arsenal and a more critical war zone. More than 28,500 American troops are based in South Korea as a legacy of the 1950 to 1953 Korean War, which ended in an armistice rather than a peace treaty. Last year, North Korea conducted a record number of ballistic missile tests. It was also observed reopening its shuttered nuclear weapons test site. The Air Force struck Hamas military sites in the Gaza Strip overnight in response to a rocket attack on southern Israel hours earlier. The Army says that it targeted facilities in Gaza used for storing chemicals and a workshop for the manufacture of weapons. There were additional alarms sounded in Sterot and nearby towns. Footage published by Palestinian sources show fireballs exploding in central Gaza. The Israeli bombing runs were in response to a rocket launched towards Sterot but intercepted by the Iron Dome defense system. A 50-year-old woman was injured while running to shelter. Luke 21:25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity, 
or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. With violent clashes between anti-government protesters and police in Peru looking certain to stretch into another month, alarm is growing among business owners in Lima as they struggle to keep their shops afloat. Initially limited to Peru's mountainous south, protests have gathered steam in the capital in the last few weeks. Some demonstrators armed with rocks and makeshift shields were in direct confrontation with police, who deployed tear gas and rubber bullets. A protester died over the weekend in Lima, bringing the nationwide death toll to 58 since protests began in early December after the impeachment and arrest of former president Pedro Castillo. The new president, Dina Boluarte, said that weeks of deadly demonstrations have caused hundreds of millions of dollars in damage to the country's infrastructure. For a second time this month, French workers and unions took to the streets across the country in their hundreds of thousands against planned pension reforms. And public sector strikes tore into the economy, affecting the energy grid, transport, education and health services. There were minor scuffles between some protesters and police, and tension is likely to grow with more days of protest like this ahead as the government tries to raise the pension age from 62 to 64. Deserted streets around the Sule Pagoda. People in Yangon defiantly showing their support for the silent strike as offices and shops remained closed. Despite warnings from the military, scenes like this were repeated across Myanmar on Wednesday. But in Bangkok, where they were free to speak out, they did. Hundreds of Myanmar citizens demonstrated outside their embassy, denouncing the coup and the general behind it. Many held up pictures of Aung San Suu Kyi, the last elected leader, now facing a lifetime in jail. At this stage, senior general Min Ong Lai shows no sign of backing down. The military has used the full force of its arsenal in the past 12 months, heavy artillery, armor, and increasingly airstrikes. But resistance is strong across the country. Many clearly still refuse to accept military rule. The tactics of Myanmar's military when they forced more than a million ethnic Rohingya to flee are now being repeated across the country. Yet many neighboring nations still refuse to condemn the generals, nor offer sanctuary or aid to those suffering inside. On the border with Thailand, boats ferry supplies across to Myanmar. The World Bank estimates the economy has shrunk by 15% since the coup. Food shortages are widespread. While some trade is getting across the border, life inside Myanmar seems to be getting increasingly difficult under military rule. 22 million people living below the poverty line, millions more displaced by fighting, and basic services like education and health care essentially gone. Government uprisings are now a daily occurrence in our world. People in just about every nation are protesting, rioting, and demanding their governments do a better job taking care of the people. A man, I believe, who is alive and well today, will soon come on the world scene, seeming to have all the answers, and he will bring a false peace to the nations of the world. Three and a half years after this man comes on the world scene, his true intentions will become known. He will bring war the likes of this planet has never seen. And with war will come famine, pestilence, and death. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names. The King of Fierce Countenance, the Prince who is to come, the Beast, the Son of Perdition, the Worthless Shepherd, the Man of Sin, the Lawless One. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering, and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. He will be outspoken, and have great speaking ability. He will have a fierce countenance. The Antichrist will be extremely proud. He will not desire women. He will be a military genius. The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. He will be indwelt by Satan. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will control a one-world government. 
He will control a one world religion. He will control a one world monetary system known as the mark of the beast. It is evident that planet earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, just as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven-year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. At this hospital in Santa Cruz, doctors say they've seen an alarming increase in the number of cases of dengue fever so far this year. Although most patients survive the disease, it can be deadly, especially for children. Nearly 70% of Bolivia's cases of dengue are in Santa Cruz. Doctors there say they're struggling to keep up with the number of new patients. The other problem we have is staff shortages. We have nurses and doctors who are ill with dengue fever and there's nobody to cover their shifts. Dengue fever can cause intense pain in muscles and joints. It's spread by the bite of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which thrives in tropical urban settings. Poor sanitation, a lack of adequate drainage and changing weather patterns are being blamed for a spike in infections. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. The terrifying morning commute there in Washington turning deadly, a suspect allegedly pulling out a gun on a bus, and then at the station, then on the train, several people shot, including a Metro employee who died trying to stop the gunman. The morning commute in Washington, D.C. today erupting into gunfire and descending into chaos, with one person killed and three others injured. I got one person down, not conscious, not breathing. Around 9 a.m., an argument on a Metro bus carrying over to the street. Police say the gunman, described as an African-American male, shoots the victim in the leg, who then escapes. Moments later, that suspect confronts a man trying to buy a subway ticket inside a normally quiet metro station in the southeast. Uh, my victim is stating the suspect approached him outside the turnstile gate, grabbed a hold of him, shot him in the leg. That victim also able to get away, but it's not over. The suspect approaching a woman, two metro workers noticing and trying to intervene. But police say the shooter takes aim at one of the workers and fires. He actually been shot um, back of his head as well. He's unconscious. 
giving us CPR right now. 64-year-old Robert Cunningham, a Metro mechanic, dies. The shooter then boards a sitting train, brandishing his firearm before commuters tackle him, apparently dislodging that weapon which falls onto the train tracks. Authorities say a third victim suffers minor injuries. Police later arriving and arresting the suspect. At least six shots from inside the building. Parties are running out. Tonight in Nebraska, an all too familiar tragedy narrowly avoided. Police say this Omaha target nearly became the scene of yet another mass shooting. This after investigators say around noon today, a man armed with an AR-15 rifle walked into the store and began shooting. AR-15 rifle with him and plenty of ammunition. There's evidence to suggest with shell casings that he entered the target and was firing rounds. It's unknown at this time if he was firing at anybody. Some ran into the parking lot. Just a really loud bang. It sounded just like something fell, and we kind of all looked around each other. Like, I hope that wasn't when I thought it was. Minutes later, Omaha police officers rushed the store. The first arriving officers went into the building, confronted the suspect, and shot him dead. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. Disturbing new details tonight about a violent kidnapping suspect who police say took his own life during a tense standoff Tuesday night in Grants Pass, Oregon. Police now suspect him of two murders. This story became even more shocking today when we learned that police found two men dead in a house just 20 miles north of here, and they believe that Benjamin Foster killed them while he was on the run. They also said that Foster took their dog here to this house in Grants Pass, where he kidnapped and tortured a woman, nearly killing her last week. Yesterday, police released this photo of Foster and the dog right here in front of the victim's home. Our cameras were here last night as law enforcement Enforcement surrounded this house. After an hours long standoff, they moved in. They say Foster was hiding under a crawl space and eventually shot himself in the head. Police say Foster has a history of serious violence against women, but managed to avoid decades in prison after negotiating a plea deal. At least 25 states from Montana down to Mississippi and north to Maine under ice cold and flood alerts. Ginger is tracking that and potentially record breaking wind chills as well as the deadly ice storm. And we'll be following that storm, the freezing rain and sleet, creating a travel nightmare with treacherous roads and canceled flights. The rain is right here in Texas, freezing rain hitting us and it's going to head north. But on top of that, it is creating slushy roadways, very dangerous. It is also more concerning for the heaviness that it is creating on top of these branches. You can see not only is it hitting here on, along the trees, but on power lines as well. And that means interruptions to power. Overnight, treacherous driving conditions plaguing the south. In Tennessee, a trooper responding to an accident when their vehicle was slammed into. And we slid on some black ice. To stay home. Stay safe. Dash cam video catching this semi truck losing control and careening off the road in Oklahoma. At least eight deaths are now connected to the storm from mostly the result of crashes on icy roads. In Texas, branches snapping and trees crashing. Power lines taken down, leaving more than 390,000 customers without power across the state as temperatures stayed below freezing for three consecutive days. Nearly half of the outages were in the state's capital, Austin.
In Dallas, people walking miles for groceries. Everything is closed. And this police SUV pulling a city bus. We've been seeing people that get stuck out here. We've been trying to help them out. More than 5,000 flights canceled since the storm began. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, only one out of every four flights made it out yesterday. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. Nice moodissa, vaikka syntyperäisin oinkin mies. Ja tuota, sieltä on niin yhdeksän vuotta aikaa, eli siihen yhdeksään vuoteen sisältyy aika paljon. Eli kun lähdetään ihan nollasta, niin ihan jo sitä, että pysyy pystyssä kahdella jalalla, pysyy pystyssä yhdellä jalalla ja sen jälkeen rupeaa niin uskaltamaan tehdä jotakin siellä jäällä. Ja sitten alkaa pikkuhiljaa kisaamaan ja esiintymään näytöksissä ja niin edelleen. Että sanotaan, että aika kivaa puraa on ollut, mutta tietysti korona tuli vähän sitten väliin, että se sitten sotki, sotki kuviota. Mutta tuota, eteenpäin mennään ja homma ja... Mahtavaa. Näiden EM-kisojen slogan... Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready 
when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.